Hello Balloon World, I'm Michael Floyd, your Balloon Twister, and this time I want to teach you how to make a caterpillar. This is a really simple design, and it only uses three balloons. Let me show you how to make it. To make the caterpillar, you'll need three 260s. I'll be using a lime green 260 for the body, another lime green 260 for the antenna, and a pink 260 for the feet. Let's start with the body. Get your lime green 260 out and inflate it halfway. What's the matter out? And tie. Give it a squeeze and a stretch. We're gonna start with the head. We're gonna make a small flower petal that's soft, and it should be about two or three inches in length. To keep that from coming undone on me, I'm gonna take the knot and I'm gonna push it in and out through the other side of the flower petal. Now I don't have to worry about it coming undone on me. Give it a squeeze and a stretch. Next, we're gonna make a small one inch bubble. We're gonna fold that over. We're gonna pinch twist this by pinching it, pulling it, and twisting it. So, so far you should have something that looks like this. Now we're gonna give the balloon a squeeze and a stretch. We're gonna twist a section about three inches long. Follow that up with another one inch bubble. We're gonna fold that over and pinch twist that one too. Now we do that two more times. Squeeze and a stretch, three inch section, one inch bubble, fold it over and pinch twist it. One more time, squeeze and a stretch, three inch section, one inch bubble, fold it over, pinch twist that. So you should have something that looks like this. Now we're gonna give the balloon another squeeze and a stretch. We're gonna make another flower petal, the same size as the first one. Go ahead and twist it around a couple of times so it doesn't come undone on you. Then give it a squeeze and a stretch for the rest of this. And you should almost be at the end there. Now we're gonna make three three inch sections and we're gonna twist them into each one of the pinch twists. So I'm gonna twist the first three inch section. I want it to be the same length as this one. So these two here should be about the same length. Then I'm gonna twist this seam here into this pinch twist. Then I do that again for the next section. I wanna make sure they're about the same length. These two here should be about the same length. I'm gonna twist this seam into this pinch twist. Now for the last one. I need to make another section this size. So these two here should be about the same size. I'm gonna twist this seam here into this pinch twist here. Work it around a little bit so it doesn't come undone on you later. Put all the pinch twists on one side. And the rest of this we don't need so we can pop it off. I like to twist just a little bubble there on the end. And then I just snap my fingers to pop it. Let the air out slowly. That way I have enough slack to tie a knot. Keep it coming undone on me. So here's our caterpillar so far. Now we're gonna add the legs onto this and the legs will actually straighten it out. So don't worry. Get your pink 260 out and inflate it one third of the way. Let the out and tie. Give it a squeeze and a stretch. We're gonna take the knot and we're gonna wrap it into one of the ends right where the pinch twist is. So choose whichever side you wanna be the head. We don't need to know that right now, but you might wanna start thinking about it. We're gonna twist that knot right into one of the pinch twists. And we're gonna twist two bubbles that are on the rounder side. And they should be about the same size. So mine are a little bit bigger than an inch, but not by much. Once I have two bubbles, I'm gonna twist the last seam here on the end into this pinch twist. Keeping the pinch twist on one side and the legs on the other. Now I'm gonna do that to the next pinch twist. Two more bubbles of that same size. Twist this seam here into this spot here where the pinch twist is. And then I do that again. Two more round bubbles. And I twist this seam here into this pinch twist right here, or this seam right here at the end. You can already sort of see that the legs are straightening it out. It's not like curling around like it was before. That's good. And you'll also notice that the bubbles aren't all the same size. They don't have to be, as long as they're sort of close. Now we're gonna use the rest of the pink 260 to do the same thing all the way back to the front. We're gonna twist two bubbles. Should be about the same size as we have been so far. Twist this seam here into this seam here where that pinch twist there is. Remember to give it a squeeze and a stretch as you go to keep it soft. Twist two more bubbles. And twist this seam here into this seam here where this pinch twist is. 
Last two bubbles. Now we're going to twist this seam here into this pinch twist down here. Now we can straighten it up. We want the bubbles to be all nice and squared off. And we want the pinch twist to be on the other side. So it should look something along those lines. Now the rest of this we don't need, so just like we did with the rest of the green balloon, we can push the air to the end. We can pop it. That one was loud. Let the air out slowly and tie a knot so it doesn't come undone on us. And if it comes undone on you like that and comes unraveled, just twist another couple of bubbles, take that knot and wrap it in there. And then break off any excess of the balloon that you don't want. So here's our caterpillar so far. You'll notice that the front and the back look pretty much the same. In fact, this could be the front and this could be the back. This one has a lot of knots and some ugliness, so I'm actually going to be using this side here for the front. Just so you can get a good look at it, this is what it looks like. Now it's time for our antenna. Get your other green 260, and we're going to want to put right in the middle of it only about four inches of air. So what I like to do, since I can mouth inflate, is I extend it all my hand all the way out like this. So I have the nozzle right here. You can do this with a pump, but you'll need somebody else's help. If you mouth inflate, this can take some practice. But I'm going to blow into it, and since I'm putting pressure along this side, the air will inflate right here. Just like that. So I have about four inches. The reason I want to do that is because I don't want to stretch out this part of the balloon, because I'm going to be using it to make the antenna. And you want that air to be roughly in the middle, which means you want the same amount of uninflated balloon on both sides. I'm going to twist the seam right here in the middle, dividing that air up evenly. So these two bubbles here should be about the same size. I'm going to twist this seam here into the pinch twist where my head is. And I'm going to move that pinch twist now to the bottom to compensate for the extra balloon. So that's what I have looking so far. Now I'm going to push the air to the end by doing a poodle tail. If you don't know how to do a poodle tail, you're going to pinch the very end, but still leave some space for the air to flow to the end. You're going to pull this really tight and you're going to squeeze the air down. And what happens is because the middle part of the balloon is tight, the air has nowhere else to go but the very end. How cool is that? That's science. And if it comes too far, like I only want a little bit, but if I let go of this, it's going to, all the air is going to rush to one side or the other. You can see it grow. So if you only want like a little bubble on the end, sometimes what you need to do is twist a small little bubble, tie a knot right there, slip the bubble through, and now the air is trapped in there and won't go anywhere. This has the added benefit also of making the antenna sort of lean forward a little bit, which I think looks a little bit more insect-like. Now we're going to do the other one. Pinch the edge, leaving, make sure there's room, the air can get through to the end. Push the air in. Oop, sometimes that happens if you don't leave enough room. There we go. Let some of the air go out. And then tie my knot. We want to arrange them so they're both pointing forward. And there we go. There's a caterpillar. The only thing left to do is the face. For the face, I'll be using an Edding 750 for the white of the eyes and a black Sharpie to do the rest of the art. Make sure you shake up your paint marker really good. I also recommend using like a disposable paper plate. That way you can get the ink flowing really nice. Then I'm gonna draw two large half circles for the eyes. And you can see I already messed up a little bit, a little bit of white ink already like left there. So I'll have to figure out what to do with that later. But I'm gonna wait for this white ink to dry before I draw my black on there, because otherwise it'll just smudge and ruin a perfectly good black marker. Since I messed up and have a white drip there, I'm gonna make it into a tooth and put another one on the other side so it'll look like a really silly caterpillar. Oh, I'm just waiting for this to dry before I draw on it. In the middle of each eye, I'm gonna draw a large black circle. And then going from the eyebrow ridge, tracing all the way to the outside of the eye, I'm gonna draw a line. And then I'm gonna trace the underside of the eye with a straight line. So you can see that frames the eyes real nice. Now normally I would just draw a smile for the mouth, but since I have these two big teeth right here, I'm gonna turn it into a really goofy face. So you can see now he has a really funny looking smile. And then using my white paint marker again, I'm just gonna put a dot in the right top corner of each eye. And that's just to give him a little bit of character, like a gleam in his eye. Really brings him to life, don't you think? When working with white paint, make sure you don't get it all over the place. But there we go, we're done with our balloon caterpillar. 
Well, that's it for this video, guys. As always, if you enjoyed it, click that thumbs up button, and I'll see you back here next Monday with a brand new balloon animal lesson. So if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you subscribe. I'm Michael Floyd, your balloon twister. Remember, you can make anything out of balloons, even a caterpillar.